frustration at our inability to be together in person, you are welcome back. Here and now, we missed you. No matter how long you've been away, nor how soon you will return, you are welcome here. You are invited to join us with an open mind, a loving heart, and willing spirit. We welcome you today. Good, good morning, beloved community. Good morning. I want to add my note of gratitude to the enormous team we had preparing this service uh, this morning. And I want to thank you for wearing your mask over your nose, over your mouth. Um, when we're speaking, we don't wear masks because it facilitates folks that are on the other side of the screen to read lips if they do need to read lips. And for folks that might be in the sanctuary that could also benefit from reading lips if hearing is uh, a challenge. If it, if it is the case, we do have listening and assistive devices back there. Uh, if you need one, Rich will be fitting you with one if you, if you need that. I also want to invite the folks at home. The camera is there. Yeah, folks at home. If you're joining us for the first time and would like to be uh, connected to us, hearing all the, all the amazing activities we have during the week and uh, letting us know a little bit about you, please fill out the uh, newcomers form on our website, uh, sfuu at my sfuu.org. Sfuu <laughs> Good, that was a new pass. <laughs> so please fill out the form, and if you're here in the sanctuary for the first time and would like to be in touch with us, and um, let us know a little bit about you, we do have some yellow cards as you enter the sanctuary. Please fill those out and we'll make sure that we take good care of your information and we'll offer you as much uh, information as we can. I also want to highlight a couple of things. We have a picnic today after service and it's not where it used to be. So it's not at the park near, near the building. It's uh, the park near the minister's home. So it's the other park. There are some maps in, in the uh, church foyer in case you need to make sure you get to the right place uh, that we leave in the park. Um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please hit subscribe and you get a notification every time we're live. And hopefully we'll be live uh, more than once, more than Sunday mornings. We'll make our other activities accessible to folks at home as well. So please uh, sign up. And there are instruments in the back. So uh, at the end of the service, or if you move, you can move during the service to make some noise. Uh, joyful noise, hopefully, yes. There are some instruments back there, and at the end of the service, uh, Rick will lead us in a postlude of drum beats and uh, percussion instruments. So you're welcome to join in the circle. Uh, for folks at home, please, uh, as we've been doing for the last uh, three weeks, so this fourth week, <laughs> will be the conclusion of an exercise we started. Uh, so please have some paper with you and a pen. At one point, we'll, we'll use the paper and the pen uh, if you feel so inclined. With that, I would like Joan to come forward. Good morning. So many people here this morning. And I would like to invite Andrea Motram forward to like to tell us. This morning we invited some people that are going to be signing our book today. And so And this is from uh, Martha I. Valentin. In gatherings, we are stirred like the leaves of the fall season, 
rustling around sacred trees, tossed hither and yon until we come to rest together, quietly, softly. We come to gather strength from each other. We come to give strength to each other. We come to ask for strength from the spirit of all and all that is not. When our hearts sing or when they frown, it is the way of compassion telling us to give. It is the way of peace telling us to share our gifts. For we are happiest and most powerful when love is made apparent in and through us. Spirit of the circle that is love, as we twirl in this dance that is life, we give thanks for reminding us each day of our task of ministering to each other with a searching glance, a safe touch, a generous smile, a thoughtful word. some invitations, for instance, for folks to bring instruments uh, or different ways of, of sitting, if you, if you like, or yoga mats. And some of you might have noticed that we didn't ask for anybody to bring water, necessarily. However, oh, isn't that better? Yeah. It's better, isn't it? Yeah. It's incredible how, you know, switching a button, <laughs> 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 flipping of a switch. But we, uh, we acknowledge that some of you might have brought some water with you because it's been a tradition for, for so long. So we want to acknowledge that and welcome that as well. So if you did bring water, this would be a perfect time for you to meditatively come forward and share the water you brought. If you didn't, do, don't feel bad. If you did not miss an invitation, we have these little water bottles, tiny ones, with river, with water from the American River that you're invited to take with you and even to offer to someone you might know needs of some drinking water. But at this time, if you did drink water, you were invited to come forward and share the water you brought. the safety provided by our mothers in Yonikur, remembering when we first played in the rain, our first swim in the ocean or a river, the last time you cried, remembering the waters of your baptism or the waters of your first death, 
sweat on the brows of those who fed you, the ones who still labor in the fields in order to bless humanity with heavenly waters. Remembering those in parched lands, those threatened or already harmed by rising oceans, those praying for rain, and those flooded one too many times in the last decade. As we remember, we receive the binding element of life, the vital source of all sentient beings. <laughs> May I ask our water bearers, our water sharers, to come get the um, pitchers from which we will be sharing water from previous water communions from our years together. Although we have not been together recently, we have been together a long, long time. As you feel comfortable, Please come to the center of the room with your receptacle so that you may receive water. If that is not in your comfort zone, you will find vials that you can take on the uh, windowsill behind you. But then he dawned on me, okay, 
It's a Unitarian Universalist church. <laughs> and I'm trained as a Methodist minister. So, will I have anything to offer when I get there? But that was, you know, disentangling from all of the other plastic in the ocean that I was swimming. That was, you know, see that those horrible ph photographs of those marine lives trapped with water plastic. So I felt a little bit like that. And then felt, okay, I'm, I can float, I can swim, there's a raft, I'm gonna get there. But once I get there, will I have anything to offer? And I decided that I needed some faith. <laughs> I needed to practice what I often preach and trust that you would come. That whatever I needed, I would be blessed with so I could offer to others. Just like the water, right? That some of you might have thought, oh, I didn't bring any water. Lo and behold, there's enough water here for you. And this particular year, we're offering you water to take back with you. And I had only enough energy to get in my car with whatever I fit in my car. Two days prior to that, a truck showed up and I loaded whatever I could in that truck. Didn't even have an address. <laughs> but I told them, go west. <laughs> Keep going. At one point, there will be an address keep going and faithfully they did a couple days later I had enough energy to pack it up get in the car and I knew I had an aunt and some cousins on the way and that was going to be my first stop I didn't have planned any other stop after that no reservations of hotels or anything like that and I wanted that experience also as a way to um, process the transition and to be able to arrive here in a way that I would have something to give you. And lo and behold, there was another friend that I thought lived in Illinois, but now she lived in Michigan. <laughs> Different state, as it turns out. But in the morning when I text her, I said, I'm going through Illinois, can I stop and see you? She said, wonderful, that's great. And I'm in Michigan. So I said, please give me your address. <laughs> So I can stop and see you, and it turned out to be a good, good detour, actually. But I showed up, and she had this beautiful little cabin by this beautiful little lake. And we had communion of sorts. Uh, she had a bottle of wine, we had some splits of wine. <laughs> and she said, come, let me take you to the lake. And with her came this little book, and we sat together on this lake. And she said, can I offer you a prayer from this book. I said, absolutely. I, I'm taking all I can get. And she read this beautiful prayer that I will share with you because it turned out to be precisely what I needed and something I thought would bless you and benefit you. So here's the first part of that blessing that was given to me on the way to you, on my way here. Find a bit of water to look at. It doesn't have to be much. Maybe a pond, a river, a creek, a lake. If you're really lucky, find the ocean. But go there alone at sunset. I know it seems indulgent and impossible. That's because it is. But every once in a while, the best way to keep moving through your life is to do something that seems impossibly kind for your own soul. So go alone late in the day. Leave behind the book, leave behind your prayer journal, leave behind notebooks and schedule planning, leave behind the mobile phone. If you're in a good spot, there won't be any reception anyways. And here's your assignment. Sit. Sit down and watch the water. That's exactly it. Sit in silence at the edge of the water and learn to be satisfied. 
This is the tricky part when your life is full with good and necessary and hard things. I know. Your mind will jump and jump around from thing to thing to thing and to thing and oh, one more thing. You'll feel guilty and then you will feel involved. You feel like time has slowed down. You start to think that you need to make this time count for God. And so you start to formally pray in the ways that you are taught to pray. Stop that. I do. <laughs> they will want to journal and read. Then about a good book you've been meaning to get to because you think you really need to grow spiritually. And the only way to do that is to try harder. You will get restless. You'll feel twitchy, perhaps. Then you will remember how when you were a kid, you used to be able to just be in a place without impulsively needing to check the text messages or chase around getting things done. And you think, I didn't used to be so fragmented and urgent. So friends, I invite you to take that little bit of water on the little seal if you have it, or looking here forward on the water in the Take some time, look at it, reflect on it, remember the many different shapes and forms, water has nourish you, sustain you, guide you, bless you with the ability to get to where you need to go. Trish will bless us for the second part of this video. Instructions for an evening of your life by Sarah Bessie. Be silent and watch the water. Do one thing right now and do it with your whole self. Prayer will come. It just might look a little bit different than you expect. Rest will come to your mind. You have to wait for it in patience. This isn't the providence of multitaskers. The middle distance of your mind will rise up and envelop you exhalation. Just as the sun begins to move toward the horizon, you will start to notice life as it is happening in that moment. And this might begin to feel in your body like poetry is meant to sound. A fish will fly up out of the water and return, leaving only a ring of circles going farther and farther out to every shore. You will see a bird and try to figure out what kind it is. A heron? Look at that elegant neck swooping down and low over the water heading for the reeds. You'll see dragonflies swooping, and after a few times, you won't duck in a cringe anymore. You'll watch the clouds drift, and the water move, and the sun sink, and your soul will begin to stretch out into the space left open. This is not only what you need, this is what you want. What you desire 
and even those things are sacred at times. Before you know it, your hands will find a spot to rest and your breath will slow down. tend to either gravitate from altruism to egoism or egotism, right? Or be stationed in one place in that spectrum. And sometimes one can be pretty much um, comfortable in one of those polar opposites, I suppose. And that can be problematic. So I Briefly mention the troubled waters, my troubled waters, or the troubled waters that were about to drown me for about five years, and someday I'll get a little deeper in that, but for today I wanted to share that you were a place I thought I could swim towards, a place of refuge. And I thought it would be befitting to uh, maybe do a little confession piece, right? And signal and make my journey uh, possibly a cautionary tale <laughs> or a sermon. And what really affected me and, and caused a great deal of the entanglement with all the plastics in the ocean, Chiller. was uh, too much time and maybe an inability to care for myself and be too much or too long in that altruistic place. A place that can be quite natural for some ministers sometimes because oftentimes the expectation is the minister will save the day or uh, ministers are indoctrinated and trained to adopt a degree of savior complex. And that can be very problematic. But it finally dawned on me <laughs> that I'm also a human being and have a body, have a heart, have a mind and a soul that needs tending, that needs care and that I will definitely have nothing to offer, not only to the Unitarian Universalists, but to no one if I don't care for myself as well. So the invitation at this moment is for you to reflect. Where are you in that very broad spectrum of very egocentric or selfish or me, me, me or individualistic practices, right, and patterns, and the potential extreme also of sacred complex, or extreme altruism. And I say this because communities of faith sometimes can be stuck as well in a do, 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 serve, do mode. That they are so outward oriented that the individuals within those, those teams and within those efforts end up neglecting their own mental state, their own spiritual state, their own well-being in this great effort of transforming the world, which is an amazing and worthy cause, and at the same time, one must remember that one is part of this universe, that one deserves the care, the time, and the effort as well. The love and the compassion, the forgiveness, and the ability to receive. So, where do you land? What is the work that you feel called to do? Not just in service of others, but 
in service to yourself. And with this invitation, we invite Hank to come forward and share the last part of the blessing with us. Instructions for an evening of your life by Sarah Bessie. Become acquainted with the silence in your own soul. You might be surprised by the sound of you. Sometimes you might rise up in gratitude and thanksgiving. Other times, the pain you're finally allowing yourself to feel might be overwhelming. Sometimes your soul feels like worship, and sometimes this feels like encountering a stranger. Do I know you? Then, sometimes it might simply feel like a good friend you haven't seen in far too long. And you'll think, why don't I do this more often? Let the sun set over the water. Be baptized in the gracious last light of the day, the satisfied light. Close your eyes and feel the light against your darkness mournfully. When the sun has disappeared, the light remains. And when the night sinks down in shades of indigo and navy blue, you'll be ready to be friends with the night and the silence. And hopefully, with your own soul at last. The first star of the evening will appear at last like a benediction for the patient and faithful ones. Some of you have written this, 
this contract and seen this contract, but some of you may have not. So I want to highlight a few portions with you. So chapter one, paragraph two, <laughs> section seven. <laughs> Anti-racism, anti-oppression, and multicultural awareness. The congregation, that's you, right? And the minister, me, affirm our mutual commitment to address the systemic prejudices and biases found within all parts of society by, among other things, working to ensure that the minister member, and members of the congregation and staff are trained to understand, welcome, and better serve a multiracial, multi-ethnic, increasingly diverse community and enhance the ability of each individual to live our values of justice, equity, and interdependence. The board and ministers are committed to an ongoing process to address the way systems of oppression within and beyond our congregation are perpetuated and agreed to collaborate on the development of a joint process of reflection and growth to ensure progress. This includes but is not limited to the ways in which the characteristics of dominant cultures live in our practices, systems, procedures, and our very lives. When congregation call ministers who themselves hold historically or currently marginalized identities, the congregation understands that the minister must be free to determine the extent to which they are called to lead in this mentally injustices in which the minister holds a target identity. How about the mammals? Have you finished? <laughs> yeah? Still with me? Still agree with it? And that's why you got me, because you got me in this paragraph. It's like, yes, absolutely. And I need to, uh, I need to, I need to confess that I bragged a little bit about you and about our contract. I share it with my friends. So like, look at this contract. Do you have this in your contract? Because I have this in my contract. I don't have to convince anybody <laughs> to work for justice. They are already on it and want to partner with me to do this work. Here's another section. Ongoing dialogue. Commit to open, truthful, and ongoing communication about the ways in which identity and power impact and shape congregation. Yeah? Still with me? Okay, another section. It is a basic premise of this congregation that the pulpit is free. The minister is expected to express personal and faith values, views, and commitments consistent with our understanding of the covenant that binds us in an evolving living tradition without fear or favor. I'm going to read these last few words again. Evolving living tradition without fear or favor. So here's another moment when I disclose to you that um, my ministry was plagued with a great deal of fear for many years. And there were times when I wasn't, I was not just targeted or, you know, getting those emails or those letters, but I was literally told to my face that I, I pushed the envelope. I went too far. So it is delightful to know that here, pulpit is free and we're all willing to listen to one another and even in our disagreements which by the way may happen <laughs> we will still hold one another in this covenant a loving kindness mutual respect Here's one little less part. The minister will serve in the community beyond the congregation and will in 
inform the congregation of such actions through periodic reports. What do you think? It is refreshing to be serving with a community that intentionally looks outward, that intentionally supports, sustains, right? And pays the bills of a minister who is not only expected to serve each member of this community, each visitor, each associate member, or whatever identity you may hold within this community, but I am encouraged and supported, not only allowed to or suggested, but encouraged to be out there and serve the folks that are out there, no matter what their needs may be, but if we can't meet them, I'm encouraged to go out there and to go out there with you to meet those needs. And lo and behold, coincidentally or not, <laughs> this month, September 26th, we have an opportunity to do that together in partnership with our siblings from the Lutheran Church in town and from the Episcopal Church in town. On the 26th, there's an event called Lives Against Hunger, where members of the community will come together and prepare meal packages, about 10,000 a day. It's the goal. And those meals will be sent to communities that are struggling with hunger. So, in order to fulfill my contract, <laughs> there's this opportunity. And guess what? In order for you to fulfill your contract with me, <laughs> you can join me. <laughs> so the uh, justice, social justice team has uh, put a, a prepared a table outside that you can sign up on the spot. So it's really practice what you preach, right? And it's theory is as important as the practice. So you get to practice that with me if you like on the 26th by signing up. Or if you can't be there on that day or if you prefer not to be in close proximity to anyone, there are ways you can contribute with your finances, right? With your funds. So that way, we keep doing this work that we are committing to do with one another. So this contract is fantastic because it gives me an idea of what you stand for, what you're doing already, what you're looking to do, and how I can partner, and how I can work with you on doing those things. And now I bring you to the envelope you have, and to the piece of paper you have. Because it is equally important to me, as I talk a little bit about altruism and egoism, right? that I walk with you as individuals. Because I'm getting a sense, and there's a fantastic board, and a number of teams that keep guiding me and helping me to do that work with the collective, for the collective, in-house and out there in the world. Now, how about you, as an individual, journey through this human experience, right? How about your soul, your heart, your mind? How are you willing to commit for this next cycle, to deepen that, to care for your soul, to care for your heart, for your mind? And you get an envelope there because if that commitment, that covenant you're making, right, with yourself and the community here, if you would like some support, some direct support from your minister, I want to do that. So you can write it down, a way that I can be of support to you. Letting you know how I can sustain and walk with you in the journey and hold you accountable. And the accountability piece is for you to determine. It could be, well, Minister, I would love for you to email me once a month and check in how I'm doing about this covenant I'm making, and this covenant I'm renewing. I'll do that. Or minister, please stalk me on Facebook or Instagram because I tend to vent there 
and I need somebody to call me out. No, I won't do that. <laughs> there are limits. <laughs> I won't be stalking you on Facebook on social media, which is a very dangerous platform, right? I don't know about you, but I tend to see the worst in humanity there. And also the best, so I hope you do the best. So this, this is the call. This is the action call for today. Take your time, write it down, what you want to commit to as an individual for this cycle. If you seal the envelope, it's a sign that you want me to just pray with you and walk with you. If you leave the envelope open, it's a sign that I am invited to read it and to join you on your next year journey. Does that sound clear to you? Yeah? Yes. And I, if you feel comfortable in putting your name, that would be great for me to know who I should call or email, how often, or how I can walk with you, even if it is, you know, lift my name in prayer once in a while, right? Or just check in with me when I come to church, or if I don't come to church, yeah? Whatever it may be. And during this time that you're going to be writing your covenant or your agreements or your personal agreements with the minister, I will, I will share with you, we have uh, lots of kids in the morning here, but I, I let them know, and for the young people present today, that something that I didn't read in my contract, but it was a very important part of our conversations, is that the search committee was looking for somebody who was passionate about children and youth religious education. Someone that would work with our director and support our director and support the families uh, and the religious education committee. And to me, that was also one of the top reasons why I found that this was a perfect match. Because I really am. I think it's really important for us to dedicate energy, time, efforts, and to hours let the young people know that they matter, that they are very, very important, and that we're looking up to them also for their wisdom and for all the gifts, that only the little ones and the not so little ones, but the young ones <laughs> can offer us. And these hearts that are here are a reminder, just in case you didn't know, that this congregation loves you very, very much and wanted to make sure the minister would do the same and would partner. So don't forget that, please. Know that you appreciate it. Maybe? Yeah? All right. And if you know the child that is not here today, please take a couple more hearts there. And there's water as well, which I want to invite you to take if you know someone in your life in need of some living water, some refreshing water, and give them a break. May this be a signal of your love towards them, of your care for them. And I'll take this time to, as you continue to write your covenant, I will join the congregation in prayer with whatever prayers were added to the book. The notebook of sorrows and joys. I will do that. And because we are a congregation of uh, show and tell and walk and talk. Uh, we have the opportunity to witness to uh, two members of the congregation that were uh, welcomed during ritual, uh, yeah, to Zoom, correct? Uh, but they didn't get a chance to sign the membership book. So we invite Alisa to come forward and Andrea to come forward to sign the book. And we'll witness to their commitment. Yes.
you to celebrate, right? Yes. <laughs> Thank you both for your commitment to this community of fame and look forward to our journeys together. And if you know anyone that is not yet a member of this congregation, uh, you know, let them know that there's always a possibility and a standing invitation. And I would love to, to talk to those individuals. And please receive this reading. I want so much to get it right. Whatever it is, my work, my relationships, this one wild and precious life. Instead, the best I can do is to show up. The best we can do is show up. Show up, open up. With as much tenderness and honesty and generosity and humility and care. With and for ourselves and each other. Our inherent intimacy, our inherent impact on each other is our primeval blessing and curse. Our care and carelessness both mark and make what is possible. And these words are from Reverend Anna Plato, who is another person on my journey from Connecticut to California that opened uh, their heart and their housing for me to have a glass of lemonade and receive a blessing so I could show up here with some blessings to share with you. Now I invite Joan Lattis to come forward. It's often said that the offering is the sacrament of the free church. That is to say, everything this congregation is and has is only what we bring to it. Our time, our talents, and our treasures. In person, this is embodied by the powerful ritual of passing the plates and chipping in, which we will do here in a moment. If you're joining us online, however, we ask that you would contribute to our collection after the service by going to our website or using text to give. As part of our ethic of generosity, we split our monthly collection with a local community organization aligned with our values. This month, the share of plate recipient is NorCal Resist. NorCal Resist is a community-based activist organization that offers a variety of services to asylum-seeking and undocumented persons. Its mission is to build infrastructure against oppression and empower our communities through shared resources and support. The offering will now be given and received. Thank you for your generosity. Now let's rise in body or spirit and get ready to move around in place of the singing that we can't do. We can certainly still participate in our closing hymn, Shall We Gather at the River?
that we are always building our beloved Comunidad. Thank you for reminding us that through our covenant with you, we covenant with each other and are made whole. In gratitude, we celebrate with open hearts and minds. We discover who we are separate from each other and within one another. In this circle that holds all life, may we ever work towards winding its boundaries until there are none. Amen, Paz, blessed be. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. Once again, deep gratitude to everyone who has made this, and still making this service <laughs> happen. And uh, I want to encourage you, if you feel comfortable, to offer your envelope, either if it's sealed or if it's open. You may place it on the altar here. If it's open, once again, it's an indication that I'm allowed to read what you wrote and walk with you in your personal journey as well. Or if it's sealed, we'll, we'll keep it, we'll hold it in meditation and prayer for a whole year. And we'll look at it again a year from now. And um, I want to make a proposal, considering what the contracts we have, the agreements we have made, and the covenants we, we have made. So I wonder if you feel comfortable in adding the word justice to the closing words for the extinguishing of the chalice. Right? It normally goes, may we carry the flame of peace and love, right? So if you could add the word with justice, it would, it would read, may we carry the flame of peace with justice and love. You want to try that out? Don't have to commit to it, but I thought I would propose. Yes? <laughs> so let us share these words together. And immediately after, uh, Rick will be leading us in a drum circle uh, so we can get in sync a little bit more, right? Uh, there's a big drum over there. Some of you might be eyeing that big drum for a long time, wondering what's that about? So can I want it from three, from one to three or six people? So if you want to, you know, get your heart beat with that tongue growing, yeah, don't, don't be shy. And there are instruments in the back as well that you, you're invited to take and make a joyful noise. We're going to continue this joy at the picnic, and we have a drum circle there too. Yeah? You ready? So please join me with these words. As we go forth, may we carry the flame of peace with justice and love until we meet again. Blessed be.